and Hannah's here and welcome to Kindergarten Sabbath School lesson. And today we have a wonderful story for you called The Floating Axe Head. But before that, who would like to sing a song? Come on, come join us. Let's sing and praise God together. This week's lesson is entitled, The Floating Axe Head. Boys and girls, what was the title of our lesson? The Floating Axe Head. The memory verses, serve each other with love. Galatians 5.13. Let's repeat it again. Serve each other with love. Galatians 5.13. Let's repeat it one more time. Serve each other with love. Galatians 5.13 Now it's your turn. Serve each other with love. Galatians 
Great job, everyone. Thank you. And thank you, Misha, for saying our memory verse. You're welcome. The message for this week's lesson is we can help others even in small ways. Boys and girls, do you know what we should do before we start the lesson? Yes, that's right. We pray. Do you remember the little song that we used to sing before we pray? Let's sing it together. I have knees that bend for prayer. I have hands that fold for prayer. I have eyes that close for prayer. Now I talk to Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. As we're going to study our lesson, we're going to study our lesson. Mm -hmm. About the floating accent. About the floating accent. And be with us. And be with us. And speak to us. And speak to us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do you think God cares about the tiniest ant crawling along? He does. And he cares about little things. One day, God showed someone how much he cared about a little thing. Are you still there, kids? Let's listen to the story. One day, Elisha was visiting the school of the prophets at Gilgal. Another student is starting today, someone suggested him. But there was hardly any room for him. This school needs more space. The students liked the prophet's visits. Elisha answered their questions and always had time to listen to them. So the students talked it over about the space problem. Prophet Elisha, a student began, We like it when you come and we like to have new students, but we have a big problem. We need more room. Prophet Elisha thought about it. The school really was too small. Yes, Elisha agreed. This place is too small. Let's go to the Jordan River. We can build a place where there is plenty of room, someone suggested. And there are plenty of trees to cut down to build a larger school. A larger school was needed so that all the students could go and learn about God so they could tell others. Yes, Elisha agreed. Go and get started. Then one of the students said, Won't you please come with us? You can help us find just the right place. Elisha replied, I will. And so he went with them. Soon everyone met at the Jordan River and started working. Lots of trees needed to be cut down to build a larger school. Everyone worked hard, chopping and cutting with axes. Suddenly one student cried out, Oh no! No, 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 no! Everyone heard a big splat and turned to look. The axe, the axe head was gone. No wonder the student was upset. An axe was a very expensive tool back in those days. The axe was made out of iron and it would be very hard to replace. It wasn't mine, the student moaned. I borrowed it. What am I going to do? How am I going to replace it? I just don't know. Elisha hurried to the young man's side. Where did the axe head fall into the river? He asked. There, he said. It just flew into the river right there. Then Elisha did the strangest thing. He picked up a stick and threw it into the water right where the axe head fell in. And up came the axe head floating on the water. Lift it out, Elisha said to the young man. So the young man entered the water and waited to the axe head. 
he grabbed it and returned to shore where he fixed it to the axe handle. Now everyone knows that things made of iron can't float. So how did this axe head float? It was a miracle. God used Elisha to perform another miracle. Yes, God does care about the little things. He cares if we lose a borrowed tool or a favorite toy. And don't forget, boys and girls, God always cares about your needs as well. To end this lesson, I invite you to pray with me. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for the lesson. Thank you for providing for all that we need. Thank you for taking good care of us and help us to take good care of others too. Be with us, protect us, and keep us safe. In Jesus' name, amen. I've seen the miracles, I've seen them with my eyes. I've seen my friend named Jesus turn water into wine. Seeing is believing, believe in what I see. When you look within your heart, you'll see what I mean. I can almost see the miracles right before my eyes. He fills the nets of fishermen, turns water into wine. He feeds the hungry, cures the lame, gives sight to the blind. When I look within my heart, miracles come alive. I believe in miracles. I believe in Jesus. I believe in miracles. The power of God is with us. my doubts far away if only I had seen with my own eyes sometimes my brother you've got to have faith there is a man in Israel he's doing wondrous things they say he is the son of God Jesus is his name I believe in miracles I believe in Jesus, I believe in miracles, the power of God is with us. Hello everyone, my name is Anna, and today we are on Mount Nebo, overlooking where the ten northern tribes of Israel used to be. But they aren't here anymore. They've been captured by the Assyrian army. Did you know that Mount Nebo is one of the highest mountains in the country of Jordan? From here, you can see the whole territory of Israel on a clear day. 
during the time of the Israelites, this mountain belonged to the Ammonites. Have you heard about Assyria? No? But I bet you have heard about Nineveh. That's right. It's the city where Jonah didn't want to preach. Well, Nineveh was the capital city of Assyria. And there was a reason why Jonah didn't want to go there. Assyria had the reputation of being a powerful empire and not very nice to others. Assyria was an expert at warfare. They were the first to use iron weapons and the first to build chariots of war. These and other new battle techniques helped them to conquer one neighboring city-state after another. Today you can find where the Assyrian Empire once stood by looking on a map where the countries of Iran, Iraq, Syria, Turkey, and Kuwait are now. Well, I tell you all this because Assyria captured the ten tribes as a punishment for God for their disobedience. Still, God had a plan of mercy and hope for Israel. There were some Israelites who had remained faithful to God, and when Assyria captured them, they shared their faith in God with others, kind of like Daniel and his friends did when Judah was later captured by Babylon. Let's listen as the prophets Jeremiah and Ezekiel talk about Israel's disobedience. Hello, Jeremiah. I've narrowly escaped being taken to Babylon with the latest group of prisoners. Who knows? Maybe I'll be taken in the next group. I came here because I was worried about you and the remnant who remain here with you. Someone told me I would find you here. <sighs> Tell me, how do you feel? I know you've wept a lot for this people. Oh, I feel deep sadness for our people because they have been exiled from their homeland. Even after I gave them so many warnings from God. First, the ten tribes of Israel were taken, and then, finally, Judah was taken by Babylon. I understand how you feel, Jeremiah. God showed me in visions the terrible things Judah was doing and the abominations they did in the temple. I mean, they were worshipping the sun and had so many images in the temple. Yes. Oh, it was terrible. You know, what has happened to Israel was not God's plan for his people. He wanted us to be a great nation, a leader above all other nations and that through our example, other people would know the true God. Ah, oh, my friend, it's a sad story indeed. The Israelites were a very strong and rich nation in the time of King Solomon. After all, Israel had made a covenant with God to be faithful to him, obey his laws and keep his commandments. And while Israel obeyed, we prospered. That's right. But after the kingdom divided, the northern kings turned away from God. They didn't allow the people to worship in the temple in Judah. Instead, they built high places where the people worshipped pagan gods like Astaroth and Baal. And that's why God delivered Israel into the hands of the Assyrians and later Judah into the hands of the Babylonians. Oh, Ezekiel, you know, when God called me, I was very young. At first, I was afraid to speak, but the more I kept silent, the warnings of God felt in me like a burning fire. I couldn't keep it to myself anymore. I had to warn them. Oh, I've wept and suffered much for these people and begged them to repent of their sins and turn to him. But they wouldn't listen. Instead... They persecuted some prophets and killed others. Even I was put in a deep pit filled with mud. But God protected me. The kingdom of Israel was doomed without the guidance of God. And our enemies took advantage of us. 
and God also stopped helping us win our wars. I have heard how hard it was for you, and I'm happy you didn't die like many others. Thank you for all your prayers. You know what's so sad? Instead of repenting and humbling themselves before God, the Israelite kings, together with the people, put their trust in neighboring nations like Egypt. This is so bad, and now I see everything is lost. Just look at the city. Oh, <laughs> oh. Don't cry, Jeremiah. Everything is not lost. Do you remember the princes of Judah? Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. They are being a light in the palace. God is using them. And now even King Nebuchadnezzar believes in God. Hallelujah! God has a purpose in all this. Now I understand why many faithful ones were taken captives. They will speak about God wherever they go, in the different lands of Assyria, Babylon, and other places. Far from home, there will be points of light everywhere. Now I see that what God couldn't do with his people here, he has done it by sending them to all these countries. Yes, Jeremiah, all the suffering you and I and the other prophets have endured is not in vain. God has used us to give his messages of hope. I don't know what God will ask of me next, but I know this. God's plans never fail. Well, as you can see, whenever there is disobedience, there is always a consequence. When you disobey your father or mother, there's always a consequence and sometimes even a punishment to correct your mistake. You may not see it this way now, but your parents punish you because they love you. They want to stop you from behaving in a bad way to save you from getting into worse trouble later on. Sadly, Israel never learned from their consequences. They continued to disobey God and their enemies mocked them and destroyed them. Do you want to know something? From this mountain, God showed Moses the promised land. He could only look at it, but he could never enter because Moses had disobeyed God and was also required to suffer the consequences. Nevertheless, from the same mountain, Jesus overcame one of the three temptations of Satan. He rejected the riches and glory Satan offered him. But there is good news. God will make a new covenant with all of us if we believe in Jesus. Yes, he will give us a loving heart and he will take away our pride and rebellion. Do you know what this means? God will give us the strength to obey His commandments. He will give us His Holy Spirit. I have an idea. Make a list of your friends or schoolmates that believe in God and discuss with your Bible teacher or parents how you can tell them about God's commandments. Here's a suggestion. Tell them how much God loves them and how important it is to obey His Word. You can also tell them about these Sabbath school videos so they can learn those interesting lessons too. See you next week! That was our story for this week's lesson, boys and girls. In our Sabbath school lesson, remember, we can help others even in small ways. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you for subscribing to my YouTube channel. May God be with y'all. Have a blessed week and happy Sabbath. See you next time. Bye.